We know that commonly structural geology involves the attitudes of planes and lines and that is how we represent the planes and lines in the three dimension. For lines it is plunge and trend and for planes it is the strike dip and the dip direction. On the other hand when we are dealing with the stress and strain we have to invariably look at the mechanics books and in the mechanics books we find that strike dip plunge strain terms are not there. They are using the x, y, z coordinate axis. In any of the non-geological literature, the coordinate axis x, y, z are considered. So to convert our geological data set into the x, y, z coordinate will be very beneficial. So that our works can then be linked straight away with the mechanical problems and what is available in the mechanics books. So with this motivation, I am going to talk about the conversion of the attitude data of planes and lines which I did not write into three dimensional coordinate geometry. Okay. Now imagine this blue parallelogram is a horizontal surface and this is the north geographic direction. So clockwise moving from north 90 degree will be the east and I take this east as the y axis. This x axis and y axis are making naturally 90 degree angle. Now I am considering vertically down the z axis which I can also consider. Now think that there is a line which is lying like that. If I represent it as a represent as a vector v, and then this cap symbol is given. Now this coordinate system that north is taken as the x-axis, east is taken as the y-axis, and the vertical axis is the z-axis. We can call it as the north dash east dash down north east down coordinate system. It does not mean I am taking the northeast geographic direction anywhere no north east and down coordinate system so this one is commonly used by the structural geologists when they are converting their data set into a kind of data that are, that can be efficiently be used in the mechanics okay now if this line is making alpha angle with the x axis or the north direction if this line is making beta angle with the y axis or the east direction and if the line is making gamma angle with the vertical direction then we can find out easily the direction cosine of the line L is equal to cos alpha M equal to cos beta and N equal to cos gamma equal to some expression and out of these three expressions we see this one is the easiest and it can be easily be understood. Imagine these are the three coordinate axes and here is a line this plane is a line. So what is alpha suppose this is or I orient in this way this is the x axis and north direction. So this plane and this finger making an angle alpha this is the east direction. So with east and the plane making an angle which is beta and the plane is making an angle with my thumb the vertical axis that is the gamma. Now, as I said this is the easiest relationship that can be seen and can be understood. Imagine this is the line in three dimension and then this is the z axis and I can draw a horizontal line over there. This angle is the plunge of line L. This is line L. By definition that is the plunge. And when I say gamma angle, I am basically interested at the angle between the vertical direction and L, in other words this angle. So if I write cos of this angle, let us say theta, I can write this as cos of 90 degree minus this angle which is the plunge. Now cos 90 degree minus plunge is equal to sine plunge and in that way the easiest of the one n is equal to cos gamma equal to sine plunge can be established. And if we look geometrically in block diagrams we will be able to establish L equal to cos alpha equal to that, M equal to cos beta equal to that. Now recollect what happens in case of the direction cosines. L square plus M square plus N square has to be equal to 1 
for any line in the space and it holds true if I square this square this and square that and add them up you can check that it turns out to be 1 that means this formulation is ok. Now, now with this understanding we are we can set a problem in this following consideration find out the direction cosine L m n of a line with option case A the line has a plunge 32 degree and trend west, B the line is horizontal and which trends 321 degree, C a vertical line and D is a line with plunge 71 degree and trend 172 degree. Okay. So, basically we are going to apply the formula. A line that trends west, west means basically 270 degree. So, in the formula plunge 32 and train 270 has to be plotted you will get the answer. So, it is a request to the students who are watching solve all these problems first stopping the video and after solving it continue the video and see how I am explaining things. I hope you stop the video indeed and you have done. In case of a vertical line how did you solve I am interested to know the finding out the L m n values because for a vertical line the plunge is 90 degree and trend is undefined. So, how you will handle here a line of plunge and trend some values is the case D and when you say that a horizontal line with trend 321 degree where is the plunge the plunge of a horizontal line is 0 degree. So, here is one information plunge and then there is strain then you have to find out and you can cross check with your result. In all the cases what is going to happen L square plus M square plus N square has to be equal to 1. Now, the next set of problem is here find out the angles between the case of line A and line D, the cases of line B and line C and the cases of line C and line D. You know right now for line A the L1, M1, M1 or LA, MA, NA values and you know for line D the LD, MD and the ND values. So, from there apply the standard formula available in three dimensional coordinate geometry from the direction cosines of the two given lines what is the angle find out that angle. There will be two answers remember because when two lines intersect in space if one angle is theta another angle is 180 degree minus theta. So, if you get any value x the other answer has to be 180 degree minus x two answers has to be there. Now, let us look at the angle between lines B and C that means the angle between a horizontal line and a vertical line this answer is straight away 90 degree a horizontal line of any trend and a vertical line always makes 90 degree. So, this has to be 90 degree and then the angle between a vertical line and this line with a plunge is given. So, here also actually one does not need to do so many things simply the answer is 90 degree minus plunge that means 90 degree minus 71 degree is the answer. But in case of lines A and D you need formula and the alternate process you certainly know is that using the stereo net which is very commonly used in structural geological problems. Now, what we have learned the new formula of conversion of the attitude of the lines into the direction cosines of the lines can be used to solve usual or standard problems in structural geology as well. For example, if I say the angle between a plane and a line in three dimension which are present plane and line in three dimension is to be found out. One way is that we know already by stereo net we can plot the planes as a plane as a grid circle the line as a point then from this grid circle I can drop uh, find the pole and so on so forth. Similar approach can be taken here and this diagram is worth watching the plane is given strike deep deep direction from there I can find out the plunge and trend of the pole 
this can be done very easily once the pole is found as a line and another line is already there where our aim is right now to find out the angle between line and the plane first we find out the angle between the pole and the line given by phi so from the direction cosines for the pole and the direction cosines from the line we can find out by applying the standard uh, formula coordinate geometry formula for the angle between them once this angle is found out note that this angle is our aim this angle is equal to 90 degree minus phi that's what i have written here and the other angle here is between the line and the plane is this angle which is 90 degree plus phi so the answer is 90 degree plus minus phi so this is not dealing with stress or strain however we are just getting conversant with what we learned just now so in the same direct direction in the same line what is the angle between the two planes we found out when the attitudes of the two planes are given that means the strike deep and deep direction of the planes are given in this case how do we solve one is that we apply stereo net the other is that we can apply the formula and let's see how can we done plane 1 is there from there i can find out the strike the plunge and trend of pole 1 and plane 2 is there from the strike deep and deep direction i can find out the plunge and trend of pole 2 so pole 1 and pole 2 are the two lines i can find out its lmn values i can find out its lmn values from there applying standard formula i can find out the theta angle but this was not the angle we were looking for we need essentially this angle phi and 180 degree minus phi the angle between the two planes now observe that within this quadrilateral these two angles are 90 so theta plus phi has to be 180 degree and theta is what we have found out so therefore phi will be 180 degree minus theta now what about the other angle phi dash which is here this is total 180 degree minus phi and i write this 180 degree minus phi and phi is 180 degree minus theta so it turns out to be theta so the two angles that we find out is theta and 180 degree minus theta that means the angle between the two poles of the two planes is also the angle between the two planes so in this way we have practiced uh, what we learned right now the direction cosine of a line and now we are going to take it forward into the more circle problem I recollected another problem which will help us to understand whether we have understood the direction cosine and the plunge and trend mutual conversion or not. So here is the problem as per the north east down coordinate system find out the attitude of a line which has L is equal to 0.3 and M equal to 0.2. Note that we are still following the north east down coordinate system so the formula that was given to you will work here. Note also that L, M are given but the N value is not given. So how to proceed? Here is a solution. We know that L square plus M square plus N square has to be equal to 1. L and M are given so N can be worked out. Now since N square equal to some number therefore we will get two values N positive and negative. So here is a question to you. N negative means what? Now apply the following formula N equal to cos gamma equal to sine plunge and we know n value just now calculated so from there find out the plunge so plunge will be found out as sine inverse sine inverse n once that is found out we have two other formula l equal to cos alpha equal to this and m equal to that in any one of them you can put the plunge and you will get the trend value so in this way other way around has been done LMN values are given and from there we have found the plunge and trend you must do it now note that once we are calling as trend in all such problems here trend is measured clockwise from the geographic north direction with convention in structural geology however there are other structural geologies following different way of writing so if they are writing differently you have to be very alert to fit into the north east down coordinate system and use this formula, we need the trend measured from north in a clockwise direction. We have seen already the Mohr circle problem where we dealt with the biaxial stress regime in two dimension. What it means was that there is a normal stress sigma 1 acting on this horizontal plane and there is a vertical plane on which there is a horizontal stress acting. 
Suppose these stresses sigma 1 and sigma 3 were allowed to enter and interact with this diagonal plane AB, then the question was on the AB plane how much is the sigma n, how much is the sigma s. We have seen how from formula we can put the values of sigma 3, sigma 1, theta is the deep of AB plane or the AB line here and then find out sigma n and sigma s. We have also seen geometric means of finding out sigma n and sigma s. Now we will go one step ahead of it. We are going to consider a triaxial stress regime in three dimensional case will be drawn as a block diagram. What is the basic difference between this and that? Here there were sigma 1 and sigma 3 whereas in this triaxial case another stress works sigma 2 and this sigma 2 acts perpendicular to the ACB plane. And here right now we will define the three axes along sigma 2 is axis 2, along sigma 3 is axis 3 and along sigma 1 is axis 1. So the sigma 1, 2 and 3 are the principal stresses that are acting, there is no shear stress produced. And here in this case the question is same as that one, how much are the normal stress and the shear stress acting on the ABMT diagonal plane, ABMT is a diagonal. So the new addition from this towards that is that there is a sigma 2 third stress axis being added that is why we call it a triaxial. There are three stress regimes acting. Okay, here today I am going to give you a geometric solution of it and for that you may write down already theta is equal to 42 degree some value, sigma 1 equal to 12 Pascal, sigma 2 equal to 8 Pascal and sigma 3 is equal to 6 Pascal. It is not always true that I have to take sigma 1 more than sigma 2 or sigma 2 more than sigma 3. Any combination is possible that is not like Andersonian model where we say that this is the highest or in some other book they say that is the highest. We have full freedom of changing the numbers. Theta is the deep of the plane which will vary from 0 to 90 degree. Here we have taken neither 0 nor 90, neither horizontal nor vertical rather an inclined uh, plane. Now, to solve this problem, suppose n1, n2, n3 are the direction cosines of the normal unit vector on the diagonal plane ABMT. What does this mean? This ABMT plane is oriented like this. Think of a normal unit vector and for this normal unit vector say n1, n2, n3 are the direction cosines. You can say alpha equal to cos inverse n1 beta equal to cos inverse n2 and gamma is equal to cos inverse n3. Now what does this mean? The on a plane if I think of a normal vector it may not be unit vector, normal vector is basically in terms of structural geology the pole of the plane. So what I wrote here we can say pole of unit length and that pole has made alpha, beta and gamma angle with the axis 1, axis 2 and the axis 3. This alpha is the angle between this either call it normal unit vector or pole of unit length has made alpha angle with axis 1, beta angle with axis 2 and the gamma angle with the axis 3. Now to solve it geometrically we proceed in a similar way as we did for the biaxial stress regime and 2D case. What is that? Consider the x axis as sigma n and the y axis as sigma s and never otherwise. Always we take sigma n along x axis, sigma s along the y axis. Now plot the sigma 1, sigma 2 and the sigma 3 values. As per my data you can see sigma 1 is more than sigma 2, sigma 2 is more than sigma 3 therefore sigma 1 is of course more than sigma 3 and plot them on the sigma n line. I am telling you the geometric process of solving. So that is what is done here is alpha 1 sorry sigma 1 plotted, here is sigma 2 plotted and here is sigma 3 plotted. Since you see all of them are positive so none of them come to the negative side, none of them are 0 so none of them plot on the origin O. Now after doing this we have to draw three circles. One circle 
passing through sigma 3 and sigma 2 point, another circle passing through sigma 2 and sigma 1 point, another circle the big one passing through sigma 3 and sigma 1 point. So, naturally this circle uh, that passes through sigma 3 and sigma 1 is the biggest one and naturally sigma 3 and this circle is the smallest one. Okay. Now, we say that without giving any proof that this dotted region is the place where my sigma n sigma s plots lies. What does this mean? The sigma n and sigma s that are acting on this diagonal plane will be plotted as a point and that lies anywhere within this dotted region. This is the first statement. The next statement is that we will find out exactly where within the dotted region that point lies. Let us say this is a point k. Once we plot the point k from its coordinate, the x ordinate will be sigma n and the y ordinate will be the sigma s value. Okay. Now, we will follow several steps and these are the steps that I have stated. We will follow these steps one by one. First, draw the alpha angle through sigma 1 point with L1. What is L1? L1 is a line passing through sigma 1 point and perpendicular to the sigma n axis. What is L2? L2 is a straight line passing through sigma 2 point and perpendicular to sigma n axis. Likewise, we have drawn L3 line which passes through sigma 3 point and is perpendicular to the sigma n axis. So, effectively L1, L2, L3 are parallel to the y axis or the sigma s axis. So, here the first step requirement is that draw the alpha angle through sigma 1 point with L1. That means, this alpha has to be the angle with L1. So, what does this mean? I have to draw a line passing through this point and with L1 it will make alpha angle. From where I get alpha? Alpha is equal to cos inverse n1. What is n1? That is related to the direction cosine for not the plane, not that plane, but a pole of that plane or the unit vector. So, if I draw this line, and this line here this angle is alpha. This line intersects the two circles at two points here and over there. I can call this point as point A, I can call this point as point A dash. That is what I write. The line intersects circles at point A and at A dash. Now, taking C3 as the center. C3 is the center of this circle, a circle that passes through sigma 3 and sigma 2. There are three centers of circles lying. C3 is the center of the circle that passes through sigma 3 and sigma 2. We have also considered a C2 center. C2 is the center of the biggest circle which passes through sigma 3 and sigma 1 point. Naturally, C2 has x ordinate more than C3 because this is a biggest circle and for that the radius is so much. Now, taking C3 as a center, draw the arc A A dash. That means, eventually we will find that these two, this point and that point is equidistant from that point. So, draw a circular arc. So, what I have drawn? is basically the circular arc. So, we have already taken care of these three steps shown by yellow color. Now, step 4, 5, 6 will be similar to these yellow color steps. That is why I have given another color. Three steps done and now step 4, 5, 6 we will do similarly. Draw the angle beta through sigma 2 with L2. That means, I will show what it is beta is equal to cos inverse n2. This beta angle has to be drawn with L2 line and 
say it intersects or it goes like this beta angle is here. Now you can look at the step draw the angle beta through sigma 2 point and this beta should be between that line which is drawn and the L2. So, here this is the L2 line and here is the beta angle has been drawn. Now, we see that this line has intersected the bigger circle over here biggest circle over there over there and then this the circle here another point and another intersection has gone over there these are the different intersection points. Now, this line intersects let us say this circle at point B and here at point B dash. Next using the center C 2 C 2 I already told you is the center of the biggest circle draw the arc B B dash draw the arc B B dash taking the center C 2 I have to draw an arc B B dash. So, it is not a very perfect sketch, but this green arc passes through B and B dash. Next these three sets of steps are done. Now, after these six steps being done the seventh one is A A dash arc and B B dash arc intersect at sigma n sigma s point and I call this as the k point sigma n sigma s is the k point. So, where is the intersection between this orange arc and the green arc I do find a point of intersection orange arc is over here that is the point k. Once point k has been found out I can draw a fresh diagram I can draw here please bring the camera here. Say this is my point k and this is my sigma n axis and this is my sigma s axis what to do find out its coordinate in other word find out this distance and find out this distance. This distance is the sigma n value now the, the normal stress that is acting on the diagonal plane and this is the sigma s value the shear stress that is acting on the diagonal plane. Now, we will again go back to our initial diagram please bring the camera here. So, through this process what we have found out the sigma n and sigma s that are occurring from sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 is action sigma 1 will contribute sigma n and sigma s on the diagonal plane. So, I can write like or I write here sigma 1 will give a normal stress and a shear stress on the yellow diagonal plane sigma 2 will also contribute a normal stress and a shear stress sigma 3 also gives a normal stress and a shear stress. Now, if I sum up these three components because all are acting normal to this plane. So, they can be added up and once this addition is done we will find out sigma n which is the simply the sum of them sigma 1 n plus sigma 2 n plus sigma 3 n. If any of them is negative then negative symbol will come and similarly I can write I can write sigma s the resultant shear stress will be their resultant. So, I am writing basically resultant of sigma 1 s sigma 2 s and sigma 3 s and once that is being done geometrically we arrive at the same result. Now, if I compare this triaxial case triaxial stress regime in 3 D with this biaxial regime what happens here this is a special case when sigma 2 becomes equals to 0. So, the problem enormously simplifies. So, now again looking into this information we had n 1 n 2 n 3 are the direction cosines of the normal unit vector and we have already studied before this presentation how the 
plunge and trend of a line can be converted into the direction cosine of the line. We have already done it. Now imagine this diagonal plane A B M T its attitude is given. Its attitude is given. Then from here we can find out the attitude of pole. From the attitude of the pole we can find out the LMN of or the direction cosine of the pole and that is why we were doing those prerequisite exercises. Once this is understood then this can readily be taken further in the problem but one thing we have to be very clear when we do the, here the north east down coordinate system and define the x, y and the z axis you have to be very carefully defining the sigma 2 or the sigma y, sigma 3 or the sigma z and the sigma 1 or the sigma x axis also the three perpendicular direction in which the stress are acting. Suppose these 2, 3, 1 let us say 2 of them 2 and 3 none of them are north none of them are east then the north is down coordinate system will not work. In that case the formula that we were using that from the attitude of the pole we will get into the LMN value of the pole will be different. So then we have to rework. So we have to be very careful what is the given data is it fitting with our uh, deduction and then we have to run and to find out the solution. Now another point once this is being done students have to take this data set and have to solve. So for that what to do I will explain right now the initial step will be same as what we did for the biaxial case here in the graph sheet take x and y axis designate x as sigma n axis designate y as the sigma s axis and now take or define a scale 12, 8 and 6 1 Pascal is equivalent to 1 centimeter. So sigma 1 will be plotted at this is the origin 0, 0, 12 centimeter this is sigma 1. Sigma 2 will be 8 centimeter, sigma 3 will be 1. all of them will be plotted. Once these plottings are done then you go to this process drawing circles steps have already been told go back to my video keep watching and keep drawing. In this way finally I will ask you to find out the point k and the coordinate. What kind of coordinate you will get? You will get few centimeters right along x few centimeter and along y so many centimeter. So let us say p centimeter and q centimeter and now you go back to the scale 1 Pascal was equivalent to 1 centimeter. So then convert them into the Pascal or the stress unit. So in this way uh, a triaxial stress regime in a more circle case can be solved geometrically. There can be other ways of also solving it.